That's supports fine. ruling. Not a problem. We would bring Detective Savelli in here for a moment so I can instruct him. No, I just need him where I can see him so I can tell him what the what his instructions are. Detective, you don't need to come all the way up. Um, you will not be testifying today. However, you are still under subpoena and you are subject to recall. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you very much. You're free to go today. Thanks. All right, who's next? Um, Strubey. I can't hear you. It's our intent to call Mr. Sturby mm -hmm. um, to testify to his initial statement that he gave the police. So you want to put him on to say, I was interviewed at the scene. I vaguely remember this. I was interviewed at the scene and I don't know who shot first. Yes. Okay. That it? That's it. And the defense, at the second statement he gives, he said the defendant shot first. So knowing that statement, they're calling him the sole person to impeach him from that second statement. No, he just told me that the only reason he's calling him is to get him to say he doesn't know who shot first. Which Period. Getting the first part of that statement where he says the officer shot first. Oh wait, no, I don't know who shot first. That was the statement he gave on the day of the incident. Yeah. He can put that statement in. There's no legal basis for telling him he can't put that statement in. That first statement. He's not telling me he's going to put the second statement in. He knows the testimony. Well, that's why we're doing a proffer. Yes. So let's get him up here. Thank you. Both parties need to pull up two cases. I think it's Kingery. I'm not sure of the, of the pronunciation versus state. It's K-I-N-G-E-R-Y, 523 Southern 2nd, 1199, Florida 1st DCA, 1988. And Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N versus state, 461 Southern 2nd, 1380. Florida 1st DCA 1984. We'll get to those in a minute. I just want you to go ahead and start pulling them up. Let's put him under oath, please. Yes, ma'am. Have a seat, sir. You can take your mask off. All right, Mr. Lineman, you may inquire. Yes, sir. Would you tell me your name, sir? Brian Strebe. 
Can you lean forward and talk into that mic so we can all hear you? Brian Streamy. And how are you employed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, how are you employed? Oh, uh, through KW Masonry. Okay. Do you recall a, uh, an inc incident that occurred back on January 9, 2017, when um, there was a shooting of a police officer? Yes, sir. And you were on the scene at the time? Yes, sir. And you met with detectives afterwards? Yes, sir. And what did you tell those detectives in regards to what you saw about who shot first? I don't remember. Did you need to clarify? Well, there's a four-page statement. So when you talk to the detective... What's the date of the statement? 1-9. Okay. On January 9, 2017, you spoke with a detective? Yeah. Okay. And do you recall what you said to the detective about who shot first? No, I do not. Would anything refresh your recollection? Probably a statement. Okay. My approach? You may. Showing you a statement. I'm referenced, obviously, on page two. If you want to look at that, it's underlined, but you can look at all the statement. Just let me know when you're done. In this statement, it says, I am not sure who shot first. It might have been the police officer. It might have been the guy. And that's what your memory of your statement is. That's what it says right here. You so. You testify and call about that statement on that particular day. Yeah. Okay. Nothing from the district. Cross? As you sit there today, do you know who shot first? No, sir. State, do you still have an, an objection to this testimony? No, Your Honor. All right. This witness may testify. All right. Who's your next prophet? So actually, Judge, I want to actually, before we do that, I want to make a motion. Okay. Hold on until. Mr. Sturbeev, you'll step out, please. Thanks. You're still, you're still under subpoena. Don't leave. Okay. Your motion? Uh, I, I don't have it at this time, Judge. Okay. So, do you have another proffer that we need to make while the jury's out? Um, sure, if you if you like. Yeah, I'd prefer not to send him back out again. Is this Dr. Toomer? Yeah. Yeah. Can we come sidebar? Sure.
right, let's bring the jury back in, please. Welcome back. State recognized presence of the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes. All right. All right. Defense, you may call your next witness. I have no idea. Where? Oh, no. All right. Brian Str um, Stribby, please. Yes, ma'am. Hearing. hearing who? Me? Yeah. I have all the mics on. Is anybody else having problems hearing me? You can't hear me either? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. I feel like a Verizon commercial. <laughs> all right, thanks. Just have a seat, sir, and remove your mask, please. May I inquire? Yeah. If I can have a moment, Judge. Yes. This, this is it. Would you tell me your name, sir? Brian Strebe. And how are you employed? Uh, through the construction industry, KW Masonry. Did there come an occasion that you were at the Walmart parking lot on January 9, 2017? Yes, sir. A shootout? And you spoke to the police that day? Yes, sir. Do you remember what you told them? Uh, after reading my statement, yeah. Okay. May I report approach to You may. Refresh your memory? Yeah. What did you say? He says I don't see I don't see know who shot first. So it could have been him, could have been the guy. Could have been the guy, could have been the police officer. Did you ever say the police shot first? No. I want to show your statement again. See if that refreshes your memory. It'll be the second sentence. I think the police officer shot first. I'm not sure who shot first. Okay, and read the rest of the sentence. It might have been the police officer. It might have been the guy. All right. So. Those are all the questions I have, Judge. Cross.
Good afternoon, Mr. Stribby. Mr. Lamb, I asked you if you were in the parking lot at the time this this yeah. incident occurred, right? Yes, sir. Can I approach the witness? You may. Show you if the marked as state's exhibit BR. Do you recognize what parking lot that shows? Yes. And while, when you were there in the parking lot, you were actually working, right? Yes, sir. Well, your job at the time was to clean the parking lot up? Yes, sir. Can you see on this diagram whereabout you would have been when you first heard gunshots? Right by this white car. Okay. I'm going to give you a red pen. If you could circle the general location where you would have been. And can you put inside that circle your initials, BS? Thank you. And the statement that Mr. Lenneman just showed you was a statement you gave to the police the morning this all happened, right? Yes, sir. And I think you gave the statement at 7.39 in the morning? Yes, sir. About 15, 20 minutes after all this happened? Probably. The next day, did the police come and talk to you again? I believe so. And they did a longer, more detailed interview, correct? I believe so. Do you remember on that day, speaking of the box, page six, do you remember at that time telling the detectives when asked, and who did you see fire the first shot, your response was a suspect? No, I do not. Okay. Let me go ahead and show it to you. It might refresh your memory. Okay. Does that refresh your memory about what you told the detectives the second day? Sure, yeah. Okay. I mean, did you tell the detectives the second day the suspect shot first? Obviously, I did. Okay. Thank you, sir. No other questions, Your Honor. Redirect. Do you remember what the name of the person who came to see you was the no, second sir. day? No, sir. Do you remember having an off-the-record conversation with the detective? Do I remember what? Having off-the-record conversation with the detective before you gave your second statement. Not really, no. Except this is going to be recorded and stuff of that nature. Did you have criminal charges pending at the time? Yes, sir. And as a matter of fact, you went on Facebook and, and told people that the police were going to help you. Isn't that right? No, it was more like me talking shit, just saying. Sir, watch sorry. your language. Me talking crap, saying, you know, they want my testimony, they're going to have to drop my charge. So that's what you said on your Facebook, you said? Yeah. Didn't you say that the cops were going to help you out? Not to my recollection. Uh, let me show your record. Your um... We're talking about Facebook four years ago. All right. Let me show your statement that you gave in a prior hearing. It's the perfect testimony. And I'm referencing to my cross examination, and I circled what I think is relevant. Take a look at that. Did you tell the police? Did you did you tell people on Facebook that the police were going to help you out? Yeah. Because you thought they were going to help you out after you changed your story. After I changed my story. I didn't hear you. I said after I changed my story, just a little chuckle. And what you said, as you just mentioned right there, that. If you were going to help them out, they would have to help you out, right? That's what I was wanting, sure. Okay. Did it happen? No. So even though you, though you thought it was going to happen, it didn't happen, you say? No. But you I thought it was going to happen? I thought it might have. thought, you know, sure, maybe, but no, it didn't. Okay. I did time on that charge. 
And you didn't think that after your first statement. You thought that after your second statement, right? I don't remember when I thought that. Okay. I have nothing further. Uh, May this witness be excused? Yes, Judge. State? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Savelli. You're free to go. Call your, or Mr. Struby, sorry. Call your next witness. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, who? Oh. Yes. You may inquire. Would you tell me your name, ma'am? Tanya Lloyd. And where do you live? Here in Orlando. Okay. Do you know Mark Keith? Yes. How do you know more Keith? It's my eldest brother. Okay. I want to talk about an incident that happened in 2014 at, uh, I guess, the church you were going. Yes. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, do you refer to that incident as something specific? Yes. Um, that was the day that he um, stressed that he wanted me to get a life insurance policy on him. Okay, and what was the reason he told you he wanted a life insurance policy? Well, this particular day, it was not one of the ordinary. He he actually showed up, and he wasn't him, himself. And he actually was what I call having, like, a psychotic episode, whereby he was, like, foaming at the mouth. His eyes were glassy, and he was saying that the police were going to kill him. So I was asking him, I was trying to calm him down and asking him, like, what happened? Or, and he was saying that he, he repeated what, you know, we've heard him say on a number of occasions, that they've traded in their nooses for guns and badges, and they're going to kill me, and you better get the life insurance policy if you guys want to bury me properly. Um, so it made such an impression on me that I did just that. Okay. Let me show you what's been marked as... Are for purposes. What is that, it's a copy of the life insurance policy that I have on him. Okay. And is it a fair and accurate representation of that life insurance policy? It is. Okay. And when did you take that out in relation to this meeting you had with him? Well, because I had never seen him like that before, and I was actually afraid that Objection something would have responsive sustained. W when did you take that out, ma'am? The issue date is December of 2014. Move into evidence. Any objection? If I could see it first. Sure. You'll show that to the state, please. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, this will be received without objection. It's defense exhibit number 16. Can I publish
Thank you. Ms. Lloyd, did you ever have a conversation with the insurance agency? I did. And what was that about? Objection, call your sustain. Is one of the concerns you had about insurance is whether it would cover him if he were killed by cops? Yes, it was. Did you ever have a conversation with Mark Keith after uh, he got better? I did. And what did he tell you in that conversation? I am calls for your sustain. It's non hearsay, Judge. Let me see the attorneys at the bench. You may proceed. Oh, sorry. sorry. Ready? Okay. And and when you had a conversation uh, with Mark Keith later, he told you he would be killed by the police. Yes, he did. Those are all my questions, Judge. Cross. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello. So you are Mr. Lloyd's biological sister, is that right? Yes. Uh, I assume you're aware that he's been charged with the first degree murder of Lieutenant Deborah Clayton? You're yes, aware of that? I, yes, I've been present all week. Okay. I wasn't sure, so I wanted to make sure. So you're also aware that he's claiming that he was insane at the time of the offense, right? Yes. Because you heard Mr. Lenneman's opening statement. Yes. Objection, Judge. The doctor is the one who makes that decision. Overruled, Mr. Lenneman. Go ahead. So you said that, was it, did you give a time frame for when he made this statement to you about, uh, about being foaming at the mouth and you said he was psychotic? Did you say when that was? It was right before I actually took out the insurance policy. Okay, and so that would have been in 2014, is that right? Yes. Okay, so what is it you do for a living? I work in human resources. Okay, you don't have a degree in psychiatry or anything, do you? <laughs> Aside from some basic um, college courses, no I don't. I ask you that because you said Mr. Lloyd was acting psychotic, but you don't have any special training in that area. That no, it? outside of my co some college courses, no I do not. Yes ma'am. I, I believe you also said that he was foaming at the mouth? Yes he was. Um, were you concerned about him that day? Very much so. Very much so. Did, did you think, well, you said he was having a psychotic episode. Did you think he was, his physical presence, his life was in danger? Was it sad to say? I mean, I guess so, because he, he just wasn't well. So anytime someone's not well, then there's a possibility of something happened to him. Right, him. and you, were, you said you were very concerned. Yes. Um, so when did you call the police or the hospital? I did not. You didn't call the police? I did not. Or the hospital? No, that would have escalated if he feared them. Well, you didn't say you had any fear of police or, excuse me, of hospitals, right? 
Not to my knowledge. Right. So you didn't take him to a clinic or anything? No. You didn't say, take him to see any psychiatric treatment, did you? No, I didn't. Right. Even though your testimony here today is that you were so concerned because you thought his life was in danger? I was concerned for his well-being, absolutely. All right. And I'm not being funny when I ask this, okay? How well do you know your brother? I think I know him well. Right. Prior to his incarceration uh, on this case, did you speak with him often? Uh, I guess. I would, I, it depends on what you would define as often. So you tell me how often you spoke to him. Once a week, once every day, once a month. Can you, can you describe that for us, please? Uh, it could have been maybe once every two weeks. Right. What kind of things would you talk about with your brother when you discussed? Objection, relevance. Overruled. When you had a conversation with him every couple of weeks, what would you talk about? Various things. We're siblings, so you talk about the weather, you talk about anything. Did he open up personal details of his life to you? Uh, no, not that I can recall. It, and I guess that would go back to what you, de what you would define as personal. Can you tell me anything that you would consider personal that you discussed with your brother, Mark Heath Floyd? I mean, outside of normal day-to-day -day things, like, I wouldn't probe into, you know, anything pertaining to him specifically. But you, I can't tell you what we talked about. I mean, we're talking some time ago. So. Well, the reason I ask him is because you're very specific about remembering his, his statements about being scared of police, right? Yeah, when events are somewhat traumatic to you, you tend to remember them. So yeah. you said events, plural. Was there another event other than the one you just described to us? Just speaking of this specific event. Okay. Just, Yes, ma'am, but you also told defense counsel that there were other times when Mr. Lloyd would tell you about his fear of police, right? Yes, he did. Okay, those weren't <clears throat> traumatic events, correct? No, I mean, it, it, he, would he would speak about that in casual conversation. Like he would... Okay, so is there any reason you remember those conversations but not anything else that he discussed with you? I don't understand the question. Either. Right, I asked you if you could tell me some of the things you talked about with your brother and you couldn't provide any specific information. Objection. This is improper impeachment, Judge. Overruled. That means you can answer. Go ahead, ma'am. Because, I mean, you didn't ask me that specifically. We talked about a plethora of things. I, I mean, I didn't know at the time what to identify. Okay. But, identify some things, please. Well, you just did. What's that? You just did. Like, we talked about, he mentioned in casual conversation about the police and how they were going to kill, they were going to kill him. He mentioned um, the lynchings. No, no, of, anything other than what you've already told us. Do you remember objection. speaking to him? Anything objection. about Objection. Overruled. Do you remember talking about anything else with your brother when you've come here to testify about here today? I mean, we talked about the weather. We talked about many different things. The weather, that's one thing. What mm -hmm. else? We talked about my kids, how they're doing in school. We talked about his kids. We talked about many things. Do you feel like you knew your brother well? I, I know Based my on these conversations? I know, I know my brother as best as I, I can. I'm... Now, you've described his statements regarding fear of police, right? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, did he ever say anything else about law enforcement? Um, not aside from what I've just, I've just mentioned. Okay, so he never shared his feelings with law about law enforcement with you other than, according to your testimony, that he was scared of them. Is that right? Right, and how, you know, they've, what I mentioned earlier about how they right. traded in their nooses for guns and badges. You've They're been killing very clear our people. about that a couple times now. I said she's been very clear about that a couple times now. So mm -hmm. he never told you about any negative feelings he had about law enforcement. Is that what you're saying? Uh, not outside of what I just mentioned. All right. Did he ever describe wanting to harm law enforcement officers? No. Did you ever hear him say that he wished ill will on them at all? No. That he wanted them to die? No. I that he wanted didn't. to kill law enforcement officers? Did he ever say anything like that to you? Not to me, no. Are you aware of him saying that to anybody else? I'm not, no. Right. Even though you believe you know your brother pretty well, right? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? That is a yes. Were you Facebook friends with your brother? 
No, not, um, I wasn't for a while. I am now. Okay, do you remember when you became Facebook friends with them? Um, no, I, no, I don't. So based upon your testimony, I take it would it be a surprise to you if your brother espoused a desire to hurt law enforcement officers. Am I right about that? It would be. Right. Because that wouldn't be the person that you know, right? That wouldn't be anything that he's ever expressed to me. You have permission um, to publish. Um, um, Judge, I have a continuing objection to this. this is yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Judge. May I publish? You may. And uh, can Ms. you, Lloyd, for the record, which exhibit are you publishing? 53. Thank you. Ms. Lloyd, there's a screen in front of you, okay? I'm going to put up some of your brother's Facebook posts that are in evidence at States Exhibit 53. First one's dated December 9th of 2014. Could you read that statement, please? Um, no, no, to yourself. You don't need to read it out loud. Oh, okay. It's on the screen. The jurors can see it. When you're done reading it, let me know, please. Okay. Does it surprise you that your brother would talk about death to crackers, referencing law enforcement officers? I, I guess, yes. Okay. I'm going to go up now and put the next post a little further down. It's December 15th of 2014 at 1533 and 24 seconds. Read that one to yourself, please. I okay. take it that statement is out of character for your brother as well. Is that right? I mean, it, I'm reading it. It's posted. Okay. Do you watch local news or, excuse me, do you watch national news? Rarely. Are you, or do you remember back in 2000 and... 16 in the summer of 2016 that there were some police officers, sh officers shot and killed in Dallas, Texas. Do you remember that? You would have to give me more information. Okay. I'm going to now publish page 475 of State's Exhibit 53. Take a look at that article headline and see if you remember it. No, I'm not familiar with that. But you do recognize that it's discussing the fact that officers were shot. Ten of them, and three of them were di died, right? Yes. Right. And now I'm going to pan out so you can see your brother's post following his posting that article. Do you see anything in that post that indicates your brother is scared of law enforcement? I mean, I can't speak to I can't speak to that. You can't tell me whether there's anything in there that indicates he's scared of law enforcement. I I can't say that. I could. Bless you. I'm now going to publish post that follow on July 8th of 2016, starting at 12:18:54.
When you finish reading the entirety of the post, ma'am, just look up at me and then I'll know you're done. Okay. Okay. Now those were posted in July of 2016. Do you see that on there? At the very top? Yes, I see the date. Which would have been less than six months before he murdered Lieutenant Clayton, correct? I get if you say so, I don't I don't even know the date this happened, so I don't know. Okay. And in that post he said the only good cop is a dead cop, right? He's saying many things, that is one. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that in this post he's expressing anger towards law enforcement? That would, that would just be an assumption for me that I care not to. Well, you were assuming he was scared of law enforcement earlier, right? Objection. No. Objection. Overruled. Simple question, are these words of anger? I can't speak to his state of mind when typing this. You don't know if saying that people should die is a word of anger? I cannot Objection. speak. Overruled. I cannot speak to his state of mind when, when they're posting this. So does it remain your testimony here today that your brother was scared of law enforcement? My testimony is that he had a fear that he would be killed by the police. Despite what you see here? Yes. A sister's love. Right? I don't have any other questions, Judge. Redirect. Please. Were you aware, Ms. Lloyd, that there are actually 30,000 pages of Facebook postings that are directly related to your brother? No, I didn't know that. Okay. He was an active Facebooker, isn't that right? Oh, yes. Um, and were you aware that in, that your brother tracked the killing of um, black men I had, around yes, the country? Yes, I, I know that he paid close attention to those things. Okay. And that um, Tamir Rice was killed in November and 2014. Relevant, Rephrase your question, please. Did you know that there were two two police two black men killed that led up to this youth reference? Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Okay. They were also Sterling Orlando Castillo. I'm familiar with those names and what happened to them. Now, during one of the first, a couple of Facebook postings, they were clearly close in time to this incident that you were involved in with your brother at the church. Okay. One is dated. What are you looking at? This is the incident. One is dated 12-9 of 2014. Okay. One is dated 12-15 of 2014. Okay. When was that insurance policy bought? In December, I believe it was December 17th of 2014. Wow, how coincidental that a rant and raving, Mr. Lloyd, 
is angry because of what he believes are injustices. I don't doubt that. Is that a question, Mr. Letterman? Mr. Letterman, yeah. ask a question. I understand, Judge. Was your brother constantly talking about the impact of police and white folks on black Americans? Yes, he did. Was it in a way that it would be considered normal or something abnormal? Coming from him, it was normal. Okay. And did, was he fixated on it? Very much so. Okay. Now, he didn't start Facebook posting until he got a federal prison. That's correct. And did he get out of federal prison in July of 2014? I don't remember the exact timing, but... Okay. You know how many years he served in prison? Um, I believe it's about 17, I believe. And was that for drugs? Yes. I have no further questions, Judge. May this witness be excused? Yes. St State. I'm thinking about a Judge. Could I have a moment, please? You can. Thank you very much. Sure. No. No, thank you. No, she may no not questions. be. No Oh. I'm no, sorry. my question was, may she be excused? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, she is excused. I apologize. Uh, thank you, ma'am. You can step down. You're free to go. Call your next witness. Yeah, call Barry Jacobs. Yes. Have a seat, sir. You may inquire. Can you tell me your name, sir? Barry Jacobs. Okay. And how old are you? 39. And do you know Mark Keith Lloyd? Yes. And how do you know him? That's my brother, oldest, older brother. Oldest, actually, I'm sorry. What's the age difference between you and him? Seven. Seven years? Okay, back in December 2014, do you remember an incident that occurred at your church? Uh, my sister told me about it. I don't go to the church. Okay. Um, and shortly after you finding out about it, did you have contact with your brother? Yes. And describe what you observed and what he was saying. Um, it was a phone call. He was, um, look, he was irate, and he was saying um, they were going to kill him. They're trying to kill him, and he'll be back. What do you mean he'll be back? Oh, he'll be back like Jesus. He said, I'll be back like Jesus, though. Okay. Okay. 
Did he say anything about his phone? Uh, yes, said they was tapping his phone. Um, say they was they had his phone tapped and other stuff. Well, that was kind of how I remember. Did there come an occasion uh, sometime after December 13th, 2016, that uh, you had a conversation or you were present for a conversation between Markeith and Kensha? Yes. And what, what did Mark Keith say? Objection. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. Did he indicate to you what he was concerned about? Objection. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. Did you have a conversation with anybody about going to the press? Uh, yes. Tell me about that. Objection. Uh, calls for hearsay. Sustained. Tell me what, not what you said to them, but what you plan to do. Um, talked about um, who was going to go out of me and my niece. Well, okay. Objection, relevance, and calls for hearsay. And Sustained what, as to hearsay. What's your niece's name? Kensha. Okay. And do you know if she went to the press? Yes. Now, did there come a time when... Um, your brother had been accused of several murders, the Clayton and Dixon murders, and was on the run? Yes. Okay. Did you talk about how you could help him out? Sustained. What were your thoughts about that and what you can do? I was trying to get what up with my mother to see if we could still get him a lawyer at that time. Can I have a moment, Judge? You can. Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So, mask. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. No problem. So, based upon this conversation back in 2014, was it your belief that your brother was fearful of law enforcement? Uh, yes. Right. Um, did he ever say anything negative to you about law enforcement? No. Did he ever indicate to you any desire to hurt law enforcement? No. Any desire to kill law enforcement officers? No. So if you were to hear that he said things of that nature, that would be a surprise to you, right? Uh, what do you mean? Well, he never said it. Well, do you think your brother wants to hurt law enforcement officers? Uh, no. Still don't. Nope. Still no. Mm -mm. Right. So you would be surprised if he talked about killing police officers prior to killing Lieutenant Clayton. That's why I say, um, what are you referring to? I'm referring to whether or not you are aware like if of Like if you mean like verbally or you mean like the statements on Facebook? Oh, you're aware of the Facebook statements? Yeah. Me and him are friends on Facebook. Okay. When did you become aware of the Facebook statements? 
Uh, my family. And no, that was who. I said when. When did you I took your deposition yesterday, remember? Mm hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Were you aware of the Facebook statement yesterday? Uh, yes. You were? Do you remember me asking you if you were aware of any statements? Objection proper. Overruled. Mr. Lenneman. You may proceed, Mr. Williams. So is it your testimony here that you were aware of the statements on Facebook yesterday? They were made aware by my family. I need you to answer my question. Uh, were, you, question. were you aware of the statements on Facebook yesterday when you gave a deposition? So you want the long one or the short one? Well, you could start by saying yes or no and then explaining. Okay, so was I aware? No, my family made me aware of the statements. Right, that's my point, sir. So after I deposed you, your family member told you the things you didn't previously know, right? No. No? Explain that, just explain that to me, please. Me and him are friends on presentation. Facebook. Go ahead. But I don't read the Facebook statements. Right. So when it comes to like saying like when it happened, they say, oh, you heard about this? No, because I don't read them. I see. I see. So is it your testimony that you were aware that he wanted to kill law enforcement officers? You just didn't read the statements? No, once again, if I didn't read them, I don't know. Okay. I guess regardless, you're aware now that he threatened to kill law enforcement officers on Facebook. Once again, on the context of the statement, if I read them when it happened, I would have a better context. Okay. I can show them to you if you want. Sure. You want to look at them? No. Yeah. Okay. So you've never seen them before. May I approach you? You may. It's exhibit 53 and I'll just flip to page 475. Just read that page or look at the picture and the caption and then read the following page to yourself. Just read it to yourself. And then when you're done, let me know, okay? This was around. Had a chance to read them? Yeah, some of them. You, no. I read a little slow. I read a little slow. No, no, it's okay. Take your time. Oh, this was, okay, okay. Right, it was after the Dallas shooting? Yeah. Right, yes sir. So this was a, it's an officer shot demonstration in Dallas, so who did the shooting in Dallas? Because I don't watch the news like that at all. I'm not sure of the exact name, but you would agree that the article references the fact that three law enforcement officers were dead, right? Yes. And your brother is talking about killing law enforcement officers. No, nah, it sounds more like a statement of what they did and him saying we never have justice. You see the one where it says only good cop is a dead cop? You see that down there? No, nah, that's I don't see that one. Which page is that on? You can page right after the article cool with the picture. Say we lost millions. I have no sins. We dying at the hands of these crackers. We've been dying in their hands for hundreds of years. 
Keep so, going. Oh, uh, right. Y'all crazy being evil. Yeah. Oh, 3K. Oh, okay. Okay. So do you see the statement? Yes. Going to? Yes. Right. And it's your position. Is it my understanding that it's your testimony that that doesn't mean he wanted to kill law enforcement officers? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for looking at that for me. I appreciate it. Welcome. Let's talk about a slightly different incident and topic. You had an opportunity to observe your brother around some law enforcement officers, right? Yes. Right. Um, and just for context, it's your testimony that he was scared of law enforcement, correct? Yes. Right. Um, tell the members of the jury about the time that you were with your brother when law enforcement had contact with you and him and some others. Uh, I was driving my car, trying to take him back to the work release center. Mm -hmm. Sir, can you lean in closer to that microphone to the car? So I was driving to my, I was driving to my car, trying to take him back to the work release center that he was in, and the police pulled us over for making a left turn, for yes, sir? me making a left turn. And he was in the car, right? He was in the car. Right. And how many officers ended up showing up that day? It was like three, two cars. Three and two cars. And your brother was sitting next to you in the front seat, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Um, you got out of the car, right? Yes. It's, it's cross-examination. Yeah, it's overruled. Um, <clears throat> did you see your brother get upset at all during the traffic stop before you got out of the car? Uh, he sunk back in the seat. I asked him. For I actually got my registration out and my insurance out of the um, glove box. Right. So before the police in other officer words, came up. I say before the police officer came up, I asked him to grab my um my license my registration and my um insurance card out of the glove box. And did he do that? Yes. Right. Did he have any type of foaming at the mouth incident? Uh no. No. All right. And there were law enforcement present, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, he gave you the registration and you got out, correct? Mm hmm Is that a yes? I say yes. So prior to you getting out, everything seemed okay with him, right? Like I say, he sunk back in the seat. He let the seat all the way back. Okay. So he was relaxed? If yes. Okay. And then you dealt with law enforcement, right? Mm hmm Is that a yes? Yes. It's okay. Everybody does it. And in fact, they didn't give you a ticket, did they? No. No. And then you got back in the car, right? Yes. And... You drove off? Yes. And Mr. Lloyd was fine the entire time? No, uh, you asked me that yesterday, and I told you the same thing. Once I got back in the car, the ride that I had, I didn't even have time to look over and ask him, was he okay? The entire rest of the ride, you never looked over and asked him if he was okay? No, because I was speeding trying to get back to work. Well, you I had got a 30 pulled over and you were speeding. But I told you the same. I wasn't speeding when I got pulled over. Oh, okay. I told you yesterday, same thing. I had a 30-minute ride to get from, Colum get from Sand Lake and OBT to Edgewater and OBT and get back over there. But you would agree then that you never saw your brother get upset during that entire interaction? When I asked him for the, the only time I seen him and I paid attention when I said, hey, grab me my insurance and my registration out of the glove box. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Judge. Redirect. Sir, um, you were saying that you were a Facebook person on Marquise, but you don't really follow it. Can you tell me about that? I post jokes on Facebook. That's all I use it for. I don't go on there and read everybody's comments, read statements. I don't let it control my life like that. I just post a joke or post a funny meme and keep it moving. I go to work. Okay. And um, when your brother got out of prison in July of 2014, did you get to spend, obviously, more time with him than you uh, got to see him over the years while he was in prison? Uh, just a little bit more, but like I say, I drove trucks. I went from driving trucks over the road to a local gig, but I was still gone. Okay. So my hours wasn't... Now, you were saying that you don't believe that what he's saying is he wants to kill a cop. No. Tell us why. Tell the jury why. Because my brother was never on that... To me, he was never on that type of, I, will say, I say time. He was never like really the type of person 
that will tell you, like, we'll talk about what they're doing to us. But to be like, I'm going to go do this to them, we would never, it was, that was never in the same sentence. Now, um, between July 2014 and November, December 2016, um, how much interaction did you have with your brother? Can you say the time again? July 2014, November, December 2016. Um, I think I stayed with him the last four months. Okay. And where did you stay? Uh, off of 18th Street. I don't know the address exactly. And was it his apartment or house? Yes, yeah, his house. So he let you stay there? Yes. Okay. Now, during that period of time, do you, do you remember your brother being more verbal about what he thought was mistreatment, racism, uh, and the way that blacks have been treated historically? Yes. Okay. More than an average person would? Yes. Let's see. A lot more? Yeah, that, yeah. That's kind of like me and him talk about the same thing. Like, I talk about it too, but I just I look at it kind of differently. Okay. Um, you don't have his mind. Okay. No, like, I understand they harass us. We get harassed. We get pulled over a lot. I understand that. So then my thought process is how to maneuver through the system. I call it the system. So, okay, I know they're going to arrest us. So, kind of, I mean, pull us over. So how can I do anything to avoid getting pulled over? Okay. But can I do, you know, speed and not making sure, like, I got cars, make sure my windows ain't tinted, super tinted, stuff like that. Can sustain. <laughs> And um, without saying what um, you guys talked about, was there conversations between you and your family through that period and from December, uh, January 2014 to November and December of 2016 about Mark Heath's mental health? Yes. Nothing further, Judge. All right, Mrs. Wins, be excused. Defense? Yes. Yes. No. No, no, no. All right, sir. Um, you're excused for now, but you're still subject to being recalled, so you're still under subpoena. So you can oh. step down. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good time to take a quick break. I'll be right, right back with you in a minute. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Lineman, do you have any further witnesses before any proffers? I'm sorry? You need to stand up when addressing the court, Mr. Lineman. I'm tired of telling you this. Do you have any further witnesses before the proffer of Dr. Toomer? No. All right. Are you intending on proffering Dr. Toomer? No, but I plan on making an argument that the state has opened the door to state of mind by introducing those Facebook pa pages. And now that we should be able to bring in all the evidence of state of mind uh, through Dr. Toomer. I don't know what the evidence of state of mind through Dr. Toomer is. I have no idea what Dr. Toomer is going to say. You all keep forgetting. I don't have his depo. I, I haven't listened to his testimony. He didn't testify at the last trial, did he? No. All right, State, you have a motion on Dr. Toomer, is that correct? On Dr. Yes, Toomer's testimony? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So we need to take care of this motion. It's 410 is the reason I'm asking you this, and we need to do the shackle hearing. Yes, Your Honor. Well, um, when, you, when Your Honor says a motion on Dr. Toomer, the only motion that I have on Dr. Toomer that I can recall is the hearsay motion. Correct. Okay, just making sure. Which is the one that I said I needed a proffer of Dr. Toomer's testimony. Um, before, so that we don't get into all of this in front of the jury. Um, 
And you're saying you think they've opened the door to what? My client's state of mind by putting out there killing cops and all of that, which is related to his mental illness, Judge. State, what's your response? Well, we admitted the Facebook post in our case in chief on the issue of motive and premeditation. Correct. The defendant's state of mind is always relevant if there's evidence of insanity. It has never been our position that Dr. Toomer cannot testify about evidence or testimony or statements of Mr. Lloyd that go to state of mind at the time of the offense. But nothing that we have introduced or cross-examined the witnesses on would open up Mr. Lloyd's statements about how he feels about racism or anything else. All right, you need to be as specific as possible. You need to be as specific as possible with me. Is it exactly what is it that you are saying Dr. Toomer cannot testify to at this point? Statements, I'll do my best, Your Honor. Statements about what Mr. Lloyd experienced as a child, if they come exclusively from Mr. Lloyd. If In other words, from Mr. Lloyd? Yes, what he experienced as a child. Oh, you mean if the statement to Dr. Toomer Correct. came from Mr. Lloyd? Okay. I'm referring ahead. to things that Dr. Toomer would say that okay. I believe are not admissible. Anything that happened when Mr. Lloyd was a child in, in the way of racism or the way he was brought up. Uh, by way of example, Mr. Lloyd told Dr. Toomer that the KKK marched past his house, for okay. example. Um, anything about him living in poverty or stealing food for um, his family. Uh, anything of that nature, and frankly, anything that is not related to his actions, Mr. Lloyd's actions on the morning of January 9th, 2017. I just gave the court some specifics that I know Dr. Toomer would relay. All right, as to Mr. Lloyd's feelings about the police, why have you not opened the door by questioning his relatives about it? I think his feelings about the police are relevant but not Dr. Toomer expanding on why Mr. Lloyd feels the way he does about the police. So you'll concede that Dr. Toomer can, with the evidence that's been introduced so far, just trying to make sure I, I, I know what the parties are arguing about. I understand, Your Honor. Number one, Dr. Toomer can testify to anything Mr. Lloyd told him about what happened the day of the incident. Agree. Yes, sir. That, that Lieutenant Clayton was shot. Yes, sir. All right. And Dr. Toomer can testify, if I understand you correctly, that Mr. Lloyd has a fear of the police and has a hatred of the police, whichever one it was that Mr. Lloyd told him, but not how he got to that point? Yes, Your Honor, because what, what Dr. Toomer will do is say, this is all based on the totality, and he told me X, Y, Z about his background in life, and because of that, I reached this conclusion. I agree that if Mr. Lloyd told him he was specifically fearful of the police, that is relevant, and we will not object to that testimony. Okay. But anything beyond that is the state's position is he is acting as a conduit for an admissible hearsay. All right, response, Mr. Lennon. Well, first of all, Judge, I, I attached the deposition to, to my response. And it's crystal clear, Judge, that the conversations he has with Mr. Lloyd and family members and uh, the records and all of this is a dynamic part of his making a decision on prong one which is whether my client is mentally ill. And he does make a decision on my, um, based on the totality of circumstances, as uh, Mr. Williams uh, snidely remarks. But Both here's another issue. Stop Jay. making personal comments. Go ahead. Here's another issue. Their doctors don't find him mentally ill at all, Judge. And so the process my doctor uses to get there is super important. Because they have these two experts who are going to say there's nothing wrong with Mr. Lloyd other than he's antisocial or whatever. And so it's important for a doctor, if you go to a doctor and you have post-traumatic stress, 
The doctor's not going to say to you, okay, um, tell me about yesterday. He's going to look at your history, your, fan, what, your, your life growing up, events that transpired, things that are signals to him that uh, he is suffering from trauma and the same way with mental illness. So all these things are important. They want to say they're self-serving and a conduit, Judge. They're not a conduit. These are things that happened to Mr. Lloyd to get him to where he's at today. And we intend to, to present 30 pages of Facebook documents that were provided to um, Dr. Toomer to review in the course of his evaluation. I think the issue that is occurring, Mr. Lineman, is not whether things that, he, that the doctor was told can be, form part of his diagnosis and part of his reasoning for reaching that diagnosis. The issue that is occurring is timing. The doctor himself cannot be used to put in testimony and evidence that cannot be cross-examined by the state because it's hearsay. So it's really a timing problem, not a, the doctor can't ever testify to this. It's that you want to call him and put him on the stand and having testified to all of these things, and I agree, he can testify to anything about what happened the day of the incident. He can testify to, because um, Mr. Lloyd's fear of the police. That's come in now, that's in, that's in. He can testify to, well, I don't know that he's going to testify to this, but to the Facebook postings about Mr. Lloyd's comments about police officers and all that was read, shown to the jury and is in evidence right now. All of that is already in evidence. The rest of it is not. Well, and the rules are clear. The now. rules are clear that experts cannot be used to bring in evidence to avoid the defendant taking the stand and being cross-examined on this. So, he can't get up and tell Mr. Lloyd's story for him. That is not, not allowed. Mr. Lloyd is going to tell his own story, Judge. And when he tells that story, then everything that the doctor based it on would become admissible. And, here's and it's the, not, the problem I'm having is the order in which you're telling me you want to do this. Okay, here's the problem, Judge. The problem is, is that Dr. Toomer is not available Monday. So our initial plan after discussing with you sidebar about the issue of him being used as a conduit, I spoke to Mr. Lloyd about that and he said, let me testify now. He was talking about today. Okay. And then um, I said, well, you know, Saturday. But the problem with Saturday, she, uh, Ms. O'Shea went out and Dr. Toomer's not available on Monday. So How long do you expect Dr. Toomer to testify? Because we have court tomorrow. No, I understand. But if he goes first, he was four hours last time, Judge. So you're expecting Mr. Lloyd to be another four hours? I'm not expecting that, Judge. Okay, I, so how I, long I, are you expecting Mr. Lloyd? Because I can play with the time tomorrow. A couple I hours. To. All right, so that puts us at about 11 o'clock if you push your, your other expert that you told me about. And then Dr. Toomer can take the stand. That's fine. And how long is Dr. Toomer going to testify? Uh, with all this stuff out, and assuming the court's going to allow it in, it's not going to be as detailed. As long as it's in evidence, it's in evidence right, that he can testify. Right, yeah. right. So, you know, not more than an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. State, do you agree with that timeline? Because I need to prepare for tomorrow. Candidly, that has not been my experience with the good doctor, but if, if they want to limit his, if they believe they can get his testimony out in an hour and 15 minutes, I'm not going to argue with that. And I think my cross of him will take an hour. So we're, so 11, an hour from him, an hour from you, that's one o'clock. If I have to push it till two to finish Dr. Toomer, I'll push it till two. We'll just make sure that we have a snack here for the jury so yes, that sure. they don't, and you all may want to bring protein bars so you keep your, and I, I'm not being facetious about that, so you keep your energy up, because we'll just go straight through that way. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so, Mr. Lloyd, I need to talk to you about you testifying. 
My client is voicing concern that uh, because of the scheduling availability of Dr. Toomer, that he's going to be cut, cut short in his testimony. No, I'm not cutting him short. Judge, we'll serve Dr. Toomer with a subpoena right now, and he can go nowhere if that's the real issue. I'm not cutting Dr. Toomer short. I mean, I don't mind running over tomorrow. He's already under subpoena, Judge. That's fine. Then he's here, and I'm not intending on cutting him short. Well, you know, you're telling me the latest we're going to finish with him is 2 o'clock. So there and we if go. if we push him to 3, then we push him to 3? It is what it is, Mr. Lloyd. Okay. Lo I'm Lord. with you. Mr. Lloyd, raise your right hand. I'm going to ask you to affirm. Do you affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Mr. Lloyd, as I explained to you yesterday, you are the only person who can decide whether or not you are going to testify. You're indicating that you want to testify. That's what your attorney is telling me. Do you want to testify in this case? Yes, I, I was always going to testify. All right. Do you understand that you have the absolute right to remain silent and you do not have to testify if you do not want to? Yes. Has anyone pressured, forced you, or threatened you to get you to testify? No. Has anyone pressured, forced you, or threatened you to get you to not testify? No. Nope. All right. Have you had sufficient time to talk to your attorneys about the decision to testify in this case? Yes. And do you understand that you may as well leave the mask down because I have several questions. Do you understand that you can change your mind up until the moment you start answering questions? Yes. All right. Do you also understand that when you become a witness, your prior record comes in in the form of they can ask you how many times have you been convicted of a felony? I know how that goes. Okay. Do you, I have to get this on the record, Mr. Lloyd. Has the defendant been told, do you all have an agreement as to how many prior felony convictions he has? Eight. Eight? Yes. All right. Is there yes, any dispute? If there is, I need to know because, Mr. Lloyd, the question is going to be asked at some point by somebody, do you have eight fe prior felony convictions? If you say no and there's more than eight, they can introduce the judgment and sentence. You understand that? Yes, Otherwise, sir. all they can do is ask you the n number. Yes. He, well, he'll check the number, but it, it doesn't matter. It's just a tool they use to try to keep. Okay. Keep just focus on my questions, Mr. Lloyd. Look, talk to me. Yes, ma'am. And focus on my questions. Now, the other thing you need to be aware of is this, Mr. Lloyd. This court has ruled repeatedly that the loss of your eye and the manner in which you lost your eye is not admissible at this phase of the proceedings. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand why you did it. Police you police are police not police. allowed to testify to that. Do you understand that? Yes. And if you do, there may be sanctions. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Is there any other things I ruled inadmissible that might come up other than the eye? At this point, Your Honor, your ruling is that the details of Shadi Dixon's murder are not admissible. Unless he opens the door. Okay, that one, I ruled it because we couldn't figure out, I, I just did, didn't have any confidence in what it was that the defense was going to argue. <laughs> so if he opens the door, he opens the door. We and understand, the state can rebut. We understand, Your Honor. Okay. All right. I'm done talking to Mr. Lloyd about his testimony. It's obvious to me he wants to testify, but again, if he changes his mind, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and send the jury home for today. Since we don't have any other witnesses we can call today. So let's bring them back in just so I can tell them they're going home. Or you know what? They don't really need me. Tell them that court is in recess as far as they're concerned until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and that I'll see them there. And would you tell um, juror 927 I'm working on the letter and I'll have it tomorrow morning. Thank you. So shackle motion. This is an oral motion. Okay, so sheriff's office, get whoever you're going to get up here. All right.
proceed? Yes, sir. We called a, we made a proffer early yesterday about what Mr. Wood would testify to. And we followed up on the basic issue and we thought we filed a proffer this morning at 852. Have you got your mic on? Have you got your mic on? You made a proffer yesterday? When? Yeah, when we were sidebar judge about what we were going to get into in our case in chief. Oh. Mr. Lloyd testified. Okay, go ahead. So anyway, this is the exact same thing that we proffered to the court yesterday. But what Mr. Lloyd it? wants me to, can I approach? Sure. No. It's already been filed, but Mr. Lloyd wants me to reemphasize that that's... You filed this in the court file? Yeah, it, it was filed. You can see the stamped copy. Okay. State, you have a copy of this? Yes, sir. I was electronically served with it this morning. My review of it is that it is almost exactly what was read to the court yesterday afternoon that yes. Mr. Lloyd had written. I can tell you right now that involving me in his testimony is not proper. I mean, this statement about the court knows this because the court was involved in the first trial. No. Yeah, we don't plan on involving Okay, yeah, you need, need to leave me out of this. So, again, the, I mean, normally evidence of other crimes is not admissible. If he wants to open the door, the only thing I'm telling everyone is the state gets to respond. So. We the door was already open. I can't hear you when you're sitting down, Mr. Romer. With their introduction of the bullet fragments over our objection, we believe that that door was open. I'm not stopping anybody. All right. So shackle motion. Let's get the, let me know when the Sheriff's Department's ready. All right. It's my understanding that Mr. Lenneman, you're requesting that we unshackle Mr. Lloyd for purposes of his testimony? Yes. Can you tell me? Can you tell me exactly what it is, why it is that you need him to be unshackled? Yes. Judge, I would use exhibit, defense exhibit 10 which is a blow up of the, the uh, Walmart. Okay. And have him come down and testify as to where he ran exactly, what his plans were, that kind of thing, using that. So you want him to point out where he was? Y yeah, I want, yeah, point out. You want him to just point out to the jury where he was? Yeah, well, he's going to, I imagine it'll be, you know, explain what happened, and he's going to give a narrative. Then I, I went this way, then, then I was going this way, I heard a shot, and I came back around, okay. pulled my gun. All right. Thank that, you. That's essentially what we want to use it for. State. I, I've not heard... Well, what are you asking me to respond to? Just generally respond to the motion? You can have a seat while we wait, Lieutenant. Go ahead. It is hard for me to fathom a more dangerous situation than allowing Mr. Lloyd to run around the courtroom unshackled. We vehemently object, and there's nothing that was just described that can't be done with a laser pointer from the witness box. All right. Um, the Sheriff's Department has also indicated that they have some security concerns. So we have a witness here. Um, as you all know, it's a shackle motion. So the state is responsible for asking questions. Mr. Lenneman, you can cross. Let's put this witness under oath, please. The silence where our first responder and I'm going to get a little bit of a Thank you. All right. You can take your mask off. Thank you. you may inquire. Could you tell me your name, please? Jennifer Chancy. Chancy? Yes. Spell your last name, please. C-H-A-N-C-E-Y. And where are you currently employed, Ms. Chancy? Orange County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been a member of the Orange County Sheriff's Office? Approximately 20 years. What is your current role at the Orange County Sheriff's Office? I am a lieutenant in the court security section. What are your duties as a lieutenant in the court security section? 
I um, am the manager over many squads within the court security unit. So we don't assume the court security would include this courthouse, the Orange County Courthouse, is that right? It does include this courthouse, yes. Um, have you become aware that defense counsel for defendant Mark Keith Lloyd has requested that he be permitted to be present in the courtroom without shackles? Yes, sir. Uh, did you do some research or have you information relevant to uh, that particular request? Yes, sir. Uh, what research did you do? What types of facts, before you tell us what they are, what types of facts did you look for in um, trying to respond to that request? Um, his criminal history, his history of what types of arrests he had, um, his ability to follow instructions of law enforcement and corrections. All right, so uh, is it, does the sheriff's office have an opinion as to whether or not Mr. Lloyd should be permitted to roam freely around the courtroom? We do. What is the sheriff's office opinion based upon the information that you've reviewed? That he should not be freely roaming around the courtroom. So you said you reviewed his history of arrest. Can you tell us about his history of arrest? Um, yes, it's several pages long, um, includes many counts of battery on law enforcement officers, resisting arrest with and without violence, um, other violent type crimes against persons, batteries, and that sort of thing. And specifically, what concern does that give the Orange County Sheriff's Office about Mr. Lloyd being present in the courtroom with other law enforcement officers without shackles? Well, what do you what do you concern would happen? There is a serious concern that he is unpredictable and will potentially be very close to many people in the courtroom that we would not be able to readily control his movement. Who are and for record purposes you're going to have to describe this, okay? Uh, who specifically in the courtroom are you concerned about their safety if Mr. Lloyd is permitted to move freely about the courtroom without shackles? Well, in this immediate area would be court personnel, jurors, yourself, and the other prosecutor present um, are in the immediate area. Uh, did you also review records of Mr. Lloyd from the Orange County Jail? Yes. Are there <coughs> incidents documented with Mr. Lloyd that give you more specific concerns about his ability to uh, obey commands from law enforcement if he is unshackled? Yes, there's been numerous incidents within the Orange County Jail where he does not follow instructions and has um, destroyed property within the jail. Do you feel, would you be concerned about the safety of other participants in this proceeding, including the court, if Mr. Lloyd were to, be, to remain unshackled for any length of time in the courtroom? Yes, sir. Can I have a moment, Judge? Right. That's okay. That, we can argue that. Well, and are you aware of whether or not Mr. Lloyd is currently serving a prison sentence? I am. And what current prison sentence is he serving? Five terms of life. That's all, Judge. Thank you. It's a lot of cross. Uh, Ma'am, how long have you been um, head of the security detail? For what? For this building. Approximately four months. Okay. Did you work on the security detail prior to that? No, sir. Okay. So you wouldn't be aware that at the last trial of Mr. Lloyd's, he was allowed to step down without shackles and present uh, explanation of a demonstrative, right? You weren't aware of that? Not personally, no. Okay. And um, at that time, he was facing, obviously, the counts that were pending at that trial, which are the ones he's now convicted of. And obviously, this uh, pending case that he was on, uh, arrested for. Correct. Okay. Um, so 
What are the circumstances that you believe have changed um, in regards to uh, what happened last time and what happened, what's going to happen this time? Well, I'm not privy to what the argument was last time for allowing the freedom. Okay, that's fair. All right, nothing further. Redirect. I do have one thing. It is beyond the scope of my of the cross. So he gets re recrossed. Yeah. That's yes, sir. Go ahead. For record purposes, I'm holding up. I'm going to obtain state's excuse me, defense exhibit number ten. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. Ms. Chance, I'm going to hand you a laser pointer. Okay. Okay. And press the green button. Okay. Okay. Could you point it at this screen and see if you can see? Yes. Can you see the pointer and area specifically on the di uh, diagram? Yes, sir. Any problem seeing that? No, sir. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. you no, you can break cross on this. Okay, There's thank you. Um, Ma'am, if he was wearing a stun cuff, do you think that would be sufficient? That is not necessarily my... <laughs> I don't know that that alone would be sufficient. Okay. Uh, what is a stun cuff? It is an electronic device which provides a shock of sorts to uh, provide control of an inmate. And what is it intended to do if it's used? To gain compliance from the person. Knock the person down? I would say no, just provide a... Um, This may be getting into security issues. <laughs> yeah, I can't really ex exactly tell you technically. I mean, um, but the purpose of it is to have them comply with our commands. And is there someone in your department, um, either under your um, supervision or otherwise, that could come and explain it to the court uh, in camera without the attorneys present or anyone else about how that works and what it does? Well, I'm not sure anyone but the manufacturer would really know how to explain to you the workings of it. Uh, for the record, Mr. Lenneman, I'm aware of how the stun cuff um, works okay. in terms of compliance. Okay, thank you, Jim. Right. No further questions. Sure. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Anything else? All right, thank you, Lieutenant. You thank can you. step down. Any other witnesses? Do you want no, State has no additional witnesses. Mr. Lineman, do you have any witnesses you want to call on this? Uh, no. Argument, state. Your Honor, only as to the stun cuff, because that's the thing that has not been addressed yet. Uh, it's pain compliance. It doesn't physically limit the, the individual wearing it at all. So if they can com if they can basically fight through the pain, they're unlimited. Uh, Mr. Lloyd has a, a violent history, um, and that is extensive. Because Your Honor tried the first case, you're aware of what the allegations that were proven in the first case were. Leaving aside, we just had a motion yesterday about Mr. Lloyd's conviction for uh, instigating a mutiny that involved actions on a corrections officer, his prior conviction for battery on a law enforcement officer, which Your Honor has heard testimony, record testimony about in the other case. Um, and perhaps most importantly, there is nothing based upon the demonstration here in court that he cannot point out on the demonstrative aid with the use of a laser pointer from the witness stand with shackles on his legs. We would ask the court to deny the motion to unshackle him for the safety of all participants of the proceeding. State want to comment on the fact that he was unshackled at the last trial. And I gave him very specific instructions, and he did comply with those. Do you want to comment on that? Right. Had Mr. Lloyd been found not guilty in the last trial, he would have potentially been released. He is now serving five life sentences, and uh, I think the phrase would has nothing to lose. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Lineman, your argument? Yeah, I don't know why First degree murder charge on a law enforcement officer, which he was then and he is now. 
So, I mean, my concern, honestly, Judge, is you're having my client who's been institutionalized um, for most of his adult life point a pointer to an area which is extremely important for the jury to understand. And so if he's pointing and it's going like this and this and this, there's a difference between him being able to say, well, I came this way and then I went that way and so forth and so on. Is there some reason you can't put it up here right next to him? Uh, we may be able to do that, yeah. Yeah, I think we can try to caddy corner it. Now he can just point from the witness stand. Okay, good idea. The, diff the big difference is he is under a sentence of imprisonment, and honestly, we've told the jury this repeatedly. I, I, I think they're, they won't be shocked by the fact that he's not free to. Okay, I think so. That, I if think you we can, can work it. is there some place we can put this, officers? Like maybe here. I have lieutenants, captains in the back. Is there some place we can put this? that the sheriff's office is comfortable with, that Mr. Lloyd, without moving from that witness stand, can point at it? It actually probably would be better than a pointer, something like a stick. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good try, Mr. Lemon. That is not happening. <laughs> can we put it right there on that ledge? It's right there. There. Can you? Let me see. Yeah. Or can I look oh, inside yeah. the exhibit? <laughs> I mean, I don't need to actually see him. I can apparently tune into several stations and watch him on TV. So. Yeah, that works. Assuming. We we'll just have some. Need somebody to hold it up. Yeah. Someone's going to have to hold that for him. Right. From, yes. from the defense. Ted will hold mm -hmm. it up. Deputies do not hold for people. Correct. Okay. If you want to go see if the jury can you see have any from objections that? to this. To what's, being, to what's being proposed? No, we do not. Judge. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it right up there next to him. Yeah, you can see it. Judge, just for the record. Yes, sir. Um, none of the other witnesses did this, and the jurors will probably look at it as he's dangerous, and they are not letting him move. Noted. Court's gonna be going to order him to remain shackled. We'll put the exhibit up there. I do find that the addition of the, he did do what I asked him to do last time, but the addition of the five life sentences is, no, this is, mine, is a factor that wasn't existing at, at the prior trial. So at this point, he can remain seated. We'll put the exhibit up there for him. Jury can see it. He can point to it. And as I said, the jury's been told he's been convicted of five life sentences. They can't possibly think he's not in custody. All right, anything else, folks? All right, we're in recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you.